So we've been fitting some tyranids to battle foam trays. And this is a tray, it's been around for a little while, but um, it came in really a lot of use for this particular <laughs> army. It is a, oh my gosh. Tyranids? Yes, but I'm forgetting the name of the tray. Oh, well, it's called something. It's called something. The something or other. Yes. I was but very look how impressed. cool they fit, because even with the um, altera alterations that we do, not yeah. alterations, the custom yeah, a, work that we do, where they're fit, they're all um, kind of in different poses, which is wonderful. This, this gives one tray you just fit everything. So many different options for fitting them in there, for tails that are long, uh, like here, and uh, for different configurations of arms and everything. So a lot of different options, great tray, deep enough even for the arms that are going up, and... Uh, just altogether a great option, which if you had to do pluck and pull foam, would take... This would be like three trays. It would take at least, yeah, I would say at least three trays probably to fit this many characters. I think there's 17 or 18 in it. So um, if any of you have ever done pluck and pull for Tyranids, which sometimes you still need to do, you will know that it's far better yeah. to get a troop tray. This which, is for Ormagons. This, yes. Um, and it just, it fits them beautifully. And you get a ton where if you had to pluck and pull, you'd have to leave so much foam between them that you would, you can get half this many in one tray. So this is really wonderful. They have a lot of others you can check out. I'm giving a plug here for Battle Foam. Oh, yeah. they're awesome. Um, so you can check out their other options. There's yeah, a this ton of options for This product is so tyranids. amazing. And Tyranids are... The laser cut stuff the right is word. outstanding. Tyranids are pokey. Tyranids are pokey, I mean, yes. they're pokey. Spiky, and Spiky, fiddly. And, and they stick... Anyway, so this makes the process ever so much more yep, pleasant. I love it. They're also doing a thing where they're making a cheap tray that's supposed to be this universal shape, I guess kind of like that. And Which we'll that be trying you, it's out. It's for shipping. Mm -hmm. And they're sending us some samples of that. So when we get those, we'll... Uh, yeah, we'll comment. And yeah, we'll show tell you we'll tell you how it goes. How it goes. So and they have their see. new fifteen twenty XL tr um, cases out, okay. which have uh, wheels on it like a a uh, suitcase. So those I are love those things. Yeah, those are coming out. Those are those are great for hauling. I feel a little wimpy though when I pull out my roller just to roll it from my car to the thing. Have you ever seen me doing that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah there it is. Hey, may as well use it. Yep. Well. There you go. I'm kind of doing what I'm doing. So, and we're going to have about four uh, units of Bretonians on the block. Very nicely painted up. And then some unpainted ones ready to expand it out. Yep. And then we have the armies I've been hawking for like 20 days now. The Cahorn Demons. The Alchemists of Chaos. Is it 20 days? I think it's only been a week or two. Okay, well, there you go. Feels like 20 days. Alright. So. And... Um... No, we have the Cadians. Those have been around for a good long while. And then we yeah. have probably a full, not probably, we definitely have a 2,000 point uh, Space Wolves army. The White Wolves. Our, a third of them have yeah, not sold. Yeah, I was going to say, a part of, two, two thirds, thirds of them have sold. sold. So we still have some left, but quite a few left. Mm -hmm. So you can still have a decent. It has one of the 1,500 point armies, mm -hmm. and then there's a bunch of single stuff still. Which look really great. So yeah. Worth doing. That definitely works. Is there anything else? Well, how was your weekend? I'm oh, drawing a blank on Yeah, I can't it. remember either. How about you, Shannon? What did you do over the weekend? I did nothing. I was you sick were again. Sick. Oh, she was I was sick, sick again. again. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Now we're theorizing it's busy. because, oh, you have uh, kids now in school. Yep. Yeah. So, and I'm thinking that's exactly what happened circulated. to me when I was sick for that week, is they had just started school that first week, and oh, I just yeah. got sick. So sick. Yep. So that was miserable. But... Doing mostly better. Here, teacher, have some hepatitis B. <laughs> Let me touch you in the eyes and nostrils. Yep. That sounds that's like, like a comfort experience, like a, Sean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, my uh, two-year-old likes to do that. Just crawl around on the ground, fish around in the trash in can. Yeah, put her hand down the, the uh, bathtub drain. You know, and then she wants to find out where you what pulled your teeth in. Yeah, that's real nice. I'm like, yeah, that's not gonna happen. So, yep. I was watching Ponyo there, right? with uh, Willow this morning, and it was so cute. So there's a cute little Ponyo on the screen, and there's a cute little Ponyo sitting next to me. She looks like Ponyo, basically. 
Yeah, she yeah. has that cute little round face. A little blonde Ponyo. Very, very she's, uh, she's a sweetheart. So sweet. Milk. Everything's milk. That's all, and that's all she wants. Not that interested in solid food. Yep. We call her a lush. Because she's, she, drinks she has like, she'll like have her bottle and she'll turn it so she can kind of see out of one eye where she's going. And then she'll be like, I'm going down the stairs now. <laughs> yep, there you go. Yeah, alcoholism in young children is hilarious. You combine those two, comedy genius. So, uh, let's continue. <laughs> Put that on my list of why I'm never going to run for office. Yeah, the list is getting longer. Okay, so what else? I don't Seen know. any good movies? Yeah, no. We Insights went out to Indian. In life? Oh, food. Indian food, nice. Yeah. We went out to Indian food yesterday for lunch. Right, but you and Kevin went out to. Indian Kevin food. and I went out to Indian food. Nice. We realized he hadn't gone go? for years. Our favorite place. India, India Palace? Palace. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. He hadn't been for years. Since it turns out in India Africa. Palace is kind of like the you know if <laughs> if it was like burger joint, yeah. it would be. Uh, India Pat, like it's a evidently there's lots of Indian restaurants called right India Pat. Oh, okay, I didn't know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it was really, really good. He hadn't been for years. He hadn't had Indian food since years ago, before we were married, when he was in lived in Africa. Does now does he order it hot? No, he just. You guys are both mild. Mild or medium. Okay. Yeah, so it was really good. So the next day we were talking about it, and instead of going to get sandwiches, which was the plan. The idea of Indian food had already come up, so two days in a row I got Indian food. It's no big oh, deal for Sean. But yeah, we, we went out um, as a staff to some yeah, Indian food Thailand. yesterday. It kind of grew into a thing. Brett comes up and says, hey, we're going to Subway. I'm like, yeah, Subway would be good, but, but how about some Indian food? Better. And then then it, it was done. And we it all was went. done. So that was good. Yep. So we also want to do, um, we came up with Brig World. Where everything is Briggs. Yeah, he needs to write a book. Yeah, decide. he does. He does need to write so a book. The fans Brig, need World. To him. Brig World. Where all the crazy stuff he comes up with is actually real. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like you have a like you have you cat think for things. It was all real. You That's know? one of our conversations yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Big Tom Cat, but his mom was nice and she gave uh, each of them their uh, own kitten. Their own kitten. <laughs> it's a complete joke, of course. Their it's own not real. Kitten. Yeah, it was really yeah. nasty. Yeah. But uh, he yeah, said maybe, it with a maybe straight Brig, face. Maybe Brig World isn't such a good idea. <laughs> maybe not oh, such a good it idea. It might be attractive to some people. I bet it would uh, sell yeah. really well. Well, there's, let me tell you, out in the world is something for everybody. But uh, some things aren't for most people. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Brig kind of, kind of is uh, fun to listen to regardless. Yeah. So I've been thinking about, well, I've been starting to dream about ultimate incarnation of the studio, right? First off, it's going to be beautiful. Like, this is nice, and I'm happy to be here. Many years it's to come. way more beautiful than what we have. But I'm thinking, wouldn't it be great if it were like, if the studio were like a paradise on Earth? Like, you would go there and it would just be this gorgeous I think indoor swimming pool thing. was in there somewhere. Yeah, Olympic-sized uh, <laughs> swimming pool. I, or indoors. Or sorted half, half tub sorted. Well, have like those own. things where they have like the basement level and it's like Roman columns and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. This isn't realistic. <laughs> I understand that. I get it. <laughs> ah. But you know, but think of how far the studios come so far. I started in my garage, one car garage, where the car wouldn't even fit in it because there was stuff, right? Like it was one of those garages where you'd have two inches of clearance if you. Actually took everything car. out, yeah. right? With one of those old, like it goes, it has old rusty springs. Yeah, yeah, California I those. style garage. Had one in New York, like that. Mm -hmm. And so I started with, you know, seventy dollars worth of paints, and the laundry piled up on one side, and the food storage piled up on the other side, just doing everything by myself. So from that to this was seven years, and things are accelerating. So I figure it'll be a similar leap in about three years. But in not terms in size. Of progression. Right. Because we I like think I've talked about small. this before. Like I met the guy that had that company that's like five hundred employees and like the he was talking to me about some of the headaches he had. And I'm like, oh wow, this guy has one hundred times everything I was going through at the time, 
he had one, you multiply that by 100, and that's what he had. And I was thinking, you know what, I don't want to be in my 50s and, you know, have that kind of stress. So that's one of my guiding principles, is keep it humble, keep it low-key, but that doesn't mean you, it can't be something beautiful. Build up something uh, human, a human mm -hmm. endeavor that improves the lives of the people around it. And like with this morning show, people watch it, they've never bought anything from us, <laughs> But their lives are just a little bit more enlivened. A little more something. And that's what we're going for. It's just good. I wonder what percent of the talking I do in these things. Oh, it just depends on what kind of day I'm having. <laughs> or if I had an interesting weekend. Because I, I stop, I, I give her a chance. He does. Sometimes yeah. I just talk right over you. But those are rare moments. <laughs>